Welcome, today we're gonna to talk all about Lightway with Chief Architect Pete, who is the expert in everything Lightway. Really excited to have you today, Pete. Um, tell me more about yourself and Lightway. So I've been at ExpressVPN for just under five years, and Lightway is a project we've been working on for just under two years now, and it's our state-of-the-art VPN protocol. It's designed for everything that our users want and nothing that they don't. So the focus is on speed in terms of performance, security, and privacy. Do you think you could tell me a bit more about how Lightway came about? Is there an origin story? Um, there's a bit of an origin story. Most VPN providers, when you know, WireGuard came onto the scene, it really you know, blew away the competition, right? It, it was so much faster than OpenVPN. It was simpler than OpenVPN. Um, it had a lot of interesting concepts that kind of changed how people even thought about VPNs. And these were ideas and concepts that would be really, really nice to have in a consumer VPN product. The challenge though was the things that WireGuard is really, really, really good at and the things I use it for because it's so good at doing them kind of interferes with how you would want that to work if you're building a large consumer platform. So it's not that WireGuard can't do it. It's more that WireGuard was designed with a very a um, specific set of principles that WireGuard follows. And if you want WireGuard to work well on a you know, platform like ExpressVPN, you have to tweak it a little bit. You have to change the rules of the game. And that affects how you kind of look at WireGuard. And if you start tweaking the rules, is it still WireGuard? Um, but we really wanted these benefits. Um, and so like I think many other people, we, we played with it. But what we really wanted was something more. Um, and so we looked at what we already had, um, OpenVPN um, being our main protocol. And I said, like, okay, well, what is it about OpenVPN that prevents us getting all these cool benefits that, that WireGuard could offer? And then we started thinking, well, you know, if WireGuard did things this way, or if OpenVPN did it that way, then we'd have something really special. We sat down and said, well, what does the perfect VPN protocol look like? You know, blue skies, green fields. If we could build something from scratch today, what would it look like? How would we build it? Um, and that's pretty much where, where Lightway came from. So it's kind of um, a mix of all the experience we've had running a successful platform, um, our knowledge of you know, modern protocols and modern technology, all kind of you know, mixed together to come up with what we believe is a, is a really compelling product. And you just mentioned, you know, obviously it builds on our, our long experience of running ExpressVPN, having experience with what it takes to run a VPN at scale. Are there any specific things that you felt, okay, I was only able to do this because I had been working on, on VPN technology for so many years? Definitely. Um, so because I've been using um, OpenVPN almost since its inception, so um, at least for 15 plus years, uh, I think actually longer than that, just as in, a, in a personal context, and then obviously using it here to provide you know, a service for, for millions of people. We deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So we see a lot of these weird um, edge cases that you know, most normal users never see. Because um, we're taking this thing up to, to a huge scale and we're hitting things right at the edge of what's possible. And this kind of um, insight of how do we deal with those things whilst you know, keeping it stable and liable for everybody else. Um, that insight kind of gave us the confidence to even you know, look at this question. It was only because we are you know, very confident in you know, both our experience with this, this platform up to this point and what makes these you know, modern platforms so interesting that we felt that you know, this was something that we could build. Um, and even then we outsourced the security aspects to Wolf SSL because that's, that's not our area of expertise and that's something we, we definitely didn't want to touch. Absolutely. Yeah, and of, of course, one of the challenges that I mean, we've definitely talked about with OpenVPN is over the years, us trying to build all these things on top of it that it wasn't really designed to handle. Yeah. And I know Lightway is designed kind of, we future-proofed ourselves a little bit by making sure that it was easy to, to build on top of. Yeah, so OpenVPN, when it was kind of first released, it was just meant to be a simple VPN connection that you could just set up and it just worked. It was never meant to be high performance. It was never meant to be super scalable. Um, it was just meant to be simple and, and work. Um, and so every time some new use case would come along, they, they would add something to it or they, they tweak something. So over literally the decades, you've now got something that's very complicated 
And if you just want to make a slight tweak somewhere, it affects things in you know other you know files or other parts of the protocol that you know you may not even be aware of. What we've done with Lightway is very specifically um, kind of add um, hooking points where we can add very specific features um, if we want them down the line. Um, so they're not fixed. Um, we can easily change it. We can add stuff. We can move stuff around um, without having to pay you know the penalty of fitting into like somebody else's architecture. So we also wanted something like that where we could just play around with it, where we could easily um, expand it, but also where we could do it quickly. So with the lightweight code base, um, we can make changes very, very quickly, um, get this out to customers, you know, potentially in you know, hours or days rather than you know, weeks or longer. And in terms of what users should expect when they switch to Lightway, which, what's the experience that they're going to have? So one of the things that we try to do with Lightway is to try and make it feel like there's no VPN there at all. So if you're connected to a location that's close to you, um, you'll enjoy very fast speeds. Uh, websites will be snappy. Lightway is kind of exciting because it tries to do something very different from what we've seen before. So historically, you've had protocols like OpenVPN, and they work great if you've got you know, a laptop on a desk with, with a Wi-Fi connection or you've got a cable and you're fairly static. Well, what we've seen with the modern you know, workload for this is mobile devices, right? So you're constantly changing Wi-Fi, you're constantly moving between cell coverage, you're constantly going from 5G to 4G to 3G and back again. Uh, all of these things create uh, interruptions in how people are using it. Um, so one of the nice things about Lightway is it tries to smooth that over. So when you change networks, um, Lightway keeps you connected. Um, and it does this in a, in a really nice, secure way. The benefit of this is the applications that run on top of Lightway or on phone to like, let's say Facebook or WhatsApp, um, they don't even realize the network connection has changed. So what could be quite slow for them to, to reconnect or to deal with that change? Because Lightway kind of hides that from them. Um, you know, they never have to activate you know, that part of the code. So you get faster reconnects on WhatsApp. Um, you get faster updates when you say, if you order an, an, an Uber and you come out of um, the lift, you'll find that you know, your signal comes back faster, the apps recover quicker. In terms of privacy and security, what are the benefits that we're seeing with Lightway? So with Lightway, we've been um, extremely careful. So we're using off-the-shelf standard um, cryptography. So when we're using um, our, our UDP, which is our, our fastest, most reliable protocol, we're actually using the DTLS standard. And for TCP, we're using the, the TLS standard. So we've not invented our own cryptography. Um, we very much believe not, you know, that we shouldn't invent our own cryptography. Um, so we've basically taken off the shelf standards and adapt them to, to our needs rather than creating um, our own. And I know we also worked with um, Wolf SSL on the cryptography part of it. And you want to talk a bit more about that? When we want to do the cryptography, we want something that's really nice and easy to use and safe to use. Um, but we also want something that's really fast. So where Wolf SSL gives us these really big benefits is they've done a huge amount of work on optimizing for all sorts of platforms, um, for the iPhone, um, for the M1 processor now, obviously for Intel. So they've done all this hard work for us, so we get all those benefits, but they also make it really, really easy to use. So there's much less chance that we will accidentally do something that we shouldn't. So I know that um, we are also open sourcing Lightway, so maybe tell me a bit about that. So uh, open sourcing is really, really important to us. Um, we've obviously built our, our VPN platform historically on open source protocols, uh, open VPN. And there's two main reasons why we want open source. One, it's just us being a good citizen. Um, we really feel that this protocol offers a lot of value and helps protect people's privacy. And we, we want to give that back to the community. The second thing is, by open sourcing it, we're allowing people to see for themselves what makes Lightway tick and see how we ended up actually building this. So we don't want this to be, you know, um, the ExpressVPN secret source. Um, we really do want people to look at this code, to understand it, um, potentially challenge us on it, file bugs. We really want to build um, a community around this. So when people go into the um, open source library of Lightway, what should they expect to, to find and see? So at the moment, the parts that we've uh, open sourced are the what we're calling Lightway Core. This contains everything you need to build a, a VPN server and a VPN client and connect the two together and you know, enjoy a VPN. 
the whole concept of um, lightways to give you a lot of flexibility in, in how you do things. Mm -hmm. So what you won't find in the release is um, the back end stuff that, for example, deals with how you know we'll de we deal with like music connections and all that sort of thing. Um, but what we are going to release and will probably be released by the time you hear this is a very um, lightweight reference implementation, shall I say, of a, a VPN server and a VPN client. So with these, um, you will be able to take the lightweight core, build a VPN server, build a client, and then create your own VPN. Um, we're hoping to have some nice tutorials on that and some nice documentation to go around it. Um, but we really want people to be able to take this and, and play with it and see it as a, a real thing, not just as an exercise of here's some code you can look at, but something people can pick up and actually play with. So anyone, regardless of whether you're an ExpressVPN user or not, or a subscriber, you can take the code, set up your own Lightweight server and client and actually use yes. Lightweight as a VPN protocol. Yes. It's pretty cool. Yep, um, and we, we, we actually welcome that. Um, yeah. We briefly talked about, you know, we use UDP and TCP, but the design of Lightway is kind of unique in that it can use any sort of um, transport. So potentially you could do um, Lightway over emojis, you could do Lightway over Google Sheets, um, you could do Lightway over Carrier Pigeon if you really wanted to. Be a bit slow, but you could make it work. <laughs> so we're kind of putting this out there to see what people kind of come up with and to, just to encourage that sort of community of experimentation and just playing around with um, what this can do. Um, we've taken a leaf out of Wolf SSL's book in that Lightway is designed so that you can set up a very simple um, VPN server and client without having to be an expert in VPNs. So all the tunneling is done for you. There's um, hooks to do authentication. You just kind of wire things up and you're good to go. So it's not like we're providing um, a piece of technology that doesn't really work for you and you have to kind of, you know, beat it with a hammer to try and make it do something useful. Um, we've, we've taken the other, the other route for this. So it's very simple, very lightweight. Right. Um, and you can wire it up into pretty much um, anything that you want. So open sourcing obviously has these, you know, great benefits in people being able to, to test it out and contribute it. Um, and also security benefits as well. Um, maybe let's talk a bit about that and also um, how transparency and security go hand in hand. Sure. Um, I think a lot of people, when they think of um, particularly VPN protocols, they're very much focused on you know, the, the security aspects of it. What we want to do is kind of make it so that it's so, so simple and so open that rather than you know, it being um, no obvious bugs, um, I can't remember who actually said that, but there is a quote that says, you know, rather than it being so complicated that there's no obvious bugs, uh, make it so simple that there's obviously no bugs. And that's kind of what we've gone for um, with Lightway. So everybody who's worked on it um, has, the, has the right level of, of paranoia. Um, we're very conscious of the level of trust that goes into this. And this thing's been through a lot of refinements um, just so that everybody who's worked on it is, is really happy that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So internally, we've got our own um, pen testing team. Um, they've attacked um, Lightway constantly and consistently throughout its development cycle um, and we've held very strong there. Um, we even asked Wolf SSL to come in and audit how we'd use their library. So it's a very simple library to use but just to be on the safe side we wanted the experts to come in and just make sure we hadn't forgotten something obvious. There wasn't some setting that we should have set that you know we haven't. Um, th those sorts of issues. Um, but then we also want to get you know, um, a full external view on this. So we also worked with Cure53, um, and their role was slightly different to our internal pen testers and different to the Wolf um, audit, in that they were deliberately looking for, you know, real security issues, how they could exploit and, and attack um, Lightweight itself, both as a protocol and, and as how we've implemented it. We did extremely well on those audits. Um, there were some minor issues that we resolved. They were mostly um, different opinions and different ideas. So it was a case of working with um, you know, the guys at Cure53 to get a really good understanding of what their concerns were and then work through them to address it. So what we really want, is, and by you know, open sourcing this, if someone sees any, any issues or someone else attacks it and finds a problem, you know, we have our standard our bug bounty, 
Um, you know, we will act responsibly with those bugs. If people were to find issues, we will be very active in working with those people to resolve them as quickly as possible. We also had some nice feedback um, from the guy who did the Wolf SSL audit, where his comment was, this code is really nice. Like, I, I'm, I'm enjoying auditing this code. Um, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's well commented, it's easy to follow. Um, you know, send me more of this. So I think even though we have had feedback from Cure53, that's a good thing. I mean, these are a different set of eyes, different way of thinking, um, and that really makes it easier for us to then, you know, kind of combine these different viewpoints and make sure that, you know, we, we've, we've covered everything from multiple angles. And so even though they found issues, the overall um, summary of the work was, you know, this, this work is basically, you know, is, is outstanding, it's excellent quality. So you and your team must be really excited. You've been working for so long. Um, how does it feel to to, to um, get it out in the world and I think now in the hands of basically all ExpressVPN users. It's always a, you know, a bit nerve wracking when you release something like this you know, to the world. Um, but we're, like I said, we're really confident in it. We've done all the due diligence, we've taken it slow, we've done a lot of testing. Um, but to actually get it in people's hands and see people you know, benefiting from this, uh, things like, um, like connection times dropping massively, uh, the connections are more stable, uh, people are getting faster download speeds. Um, or just by switching to Lightweight. So I think people are already getting huge benefits from it. So maybe that kind of leads me to a question about like, what do you see as the, as the future of Lightweight? Ideally, um, what I would love to see is instead of people saying to us, why aren't you using WireGuard? I'm hoping that people will speak to others and say, well, why aren't you using Lightweight? So we're hoping that a lot of these um, smaller companies who may not be able to pick up things like WireGuard, um, who are currently using things like OpenVPN, um, may consider the somewhat easier uh, migration to Lightway, which will then obviously benefit their users, give them better security, um, and then again, extend the, the reach of the protocol. That's super exciting, and I can't wait to see what the future of Lightway is for our users and for the entire VPN community. Um, so thank you for speaking and sharing with us today, Pete. And if you haven't checked out Lightweight yet, it is available in all ExpressVPN apps. So definitely check it out. And of course, as Pete mentioned, um, check out our open source repo as well. We'd love to hear your, your comments, your questions, and your contributions.